Another way to think of agent-based modeling or of computer simulation in general is as a third way of doing science. And this is a phrase that was first mentioned by uh, Bob Axelrod in 1997. And what he meant was that there are tr two traditional ways of doing science. Induction, which is the inferring from particular data to a general theory. So for instance, you collect about a bunch of data about the way the world is and uh, that you've seen, and then you uh, generate a theory from that, right? So maybe you run a bunch of experiments and you observe the results of those experiments, and then you come up with a theory about the way future experiments might work, right? Um, and then the second way is deduction, right? Which is reasoning from first principles to a general theory. So this is something that's often done in analytical thinking or in mathematical thinking, uh, where you postulate a set of premises about the way the world works and then see where those postulates would take you, right? And in, in what Axelrod was saying is that, you know, simulation is in fact a third way. It's a generative way of doing science. You use first principles to generate a set of data that can then create a general theory. And what's interesting about it is you can even compare that set of data that's generated from the first principle explanation to real world data in order to validate your model. This allows for what's sometimes called an integrative understanding of what's going on. If one knows the first principle of rules, you can try and determine the aggregate pattern. But this is often very difficult, and agent-based modeling provides us a way to understand this. For instance, if I had told you the rules of the flocking model ahead of time, cohere, separate, and avoid, but hadn't told you what it was a model of, could you have thought, oh, that's going to be a bird flock? And my, my belief is that you probably would not have been able to figure that out right away. Uh, it would, you might have been able to if you had run the model or played around with it, but it's not something that naturally comes to us. Agent-based modeling gives us a way to go from those first principle rules to an aggregate pattern, right? And the other side of that is something called differential understanding, right? So what if we know the aggregate pattern, but we want to figure out the individual level rules? And this is exactly what I asked you to do in the flocking model, right? I give you what the flocks look at, and then you can propose rules to observe whether or not they generate it, and you can see what, the hap what happens as a result. So imagine you didn't have the flocking model, but you just observed birds, which is essentially uh, what was done with the original Boyd's model, right? Then you could start to figure out, well, what might describe the way those birds work? And then when you put those words, rules down, you can then see if they generate the patterns that you want to observe, right? Um, and that's in some ways the difference, uh, the, the, the differential understanding method, right? And so the third way of doing science uh, of simulation allows us to do both integrative understanding and differential understanding within the same modeling framework.